Welcome back. Well, from Hogue today, uh, we have Dr. Sandeep Thacker. Nice to meet you, sir. Thanks for having me this it's morning. It's really a pleasure. And you are a doctor um, that covers, uh, you're a neurologist and movement disorder specialist. Yes. So um, describe what movement disorders are. And of course, we often think of uh, maybe people who have Parkinson's or arthritis and things like that. Is that kind of that same realm or is that different? Exactly, so I did a fellowship at UCLA and the, the fellowship is relatively a new subspecialty within neurology and it focuses on predominantly Parkinson's disease. Okay. Uh, there's other movement disorders that exist such as Huntington's disease, mm -hmm. dystonias which are abnormal postures of certain muscles where they could be of the hands, of the feet, of the neck, certain common um, vernaculars, tor torticollis that some people may know. Um, there's actually very rare disorders that are associated with eyelid closure called blepharospasms. Oh, okay. and, and basically we look at it as a mus muscular disease. So anything that doesn't move right as far as motor control of the body is that subspecialty that we look into and figure out which part of the brain or central nervous system is being affected. Okay, when it comes to the, some of the things you talk about, obviously Parkinson's is um, uh, what we hear about and a lot of a lot of different treatments are being done and uh, really looked at. Uh, what are some of the advances, especially for Parkinson's? Are, are, we, are we getting any closer to at least maybe finding something that will alleviate it or maybe one day even you know, find the gene that uh, you can create maybe a vaccine for or something? Yeah, so we're, we're really fortunate actually in this day and age with the technology of gene mapping, we're understanding the disease in a far better breath of air that we did uh, never before oh, actually. Great. We actually have current therapies that are just basically um, controlling symptoms. Mm -hmm. But we have now with deep brain stimulation, which is a surgery, where we put electrodes into certain parts of the brain to control motor control disorders such as tremor, stiffness, slowness, and walking instability mm -hmm. related to Parkinson's disease or essential tremor. And basically now the data is coming out that this deep brain stimulation surgery can be also neuroprotective in slowing down the progression of some of the symptoms. We do know that exercise is a key component of the disease manifestation and how the brain and heart work. And uh, we're very fortunate actually currently new medications, new therapies. We have 28 to 30 uh, um, clinical phase studies going on that are in the pipeline for future controlling or oh, disease great. modifying for Parkinson's disease. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great news. So maybe, you know, 10, 15 years from now, there may be something developed that uh, you can identify someone who may have a propensity to get it and, slow, and, down the and slow it down or a vaccine particularly for them. Yeah, the, the vaccines are yeah. actually being studied right now. That's we have great. several that are being um, uh, tested and, and actually passed testing in Europe and here in the U.S. there's clinical trials that are being um, accepted to slow down the progression of these abnormal proteins that we know that are propagating the disease symptoms. Wonderful. Uh, there are other different types of disorders as you describe, uh, tremors and things and um, which uh, some people, maybe they go to reach for something and every once in a while they, you know, their hand will shake or something. Although it's not Parkinson's disease, uh, is that controllable through any kind of medication or beta blockers or anything like that? Yeah, so, you know, the beauty about being a Parkinson's or movement disorder specialist is that all tremors are made differently. And mm -hmm. so the way we look at it is we try to figure out what type of tremor it is. There's some different tremors of action tremor, physiological tremor, enhanced physiological tremor, or even tremors made uh, created by medications or drug interactions. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have, you know, the ability to be trained in where, where the tremors are coming uh, from and which part of the brain, and then looking at certain laboratory and imaging testing to be very specific about it. There's a lot of medications that are out there. We use um, several medications from the seizure world or anti-epileptic world. We use cardiac medications like you brought up, beta blockers. Mm -hmm. And we know that the muscles and the nerves are very much controlled by these different therapeutic models. Are there some uh, that are just simply caused by a, some sort of trauma, by an injury, where you can, you can actually uh, pinpoint, well, here, here's the reason for this? Yeah, and so um, 
the uniqueness of having such detailed imaging is we can look at how the brain looks and we can rule out certain manifestations that exist from a tumor, a stroke, mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, the, the way the brain works, it's all about location, location, location. Yeah. And so where the injury could be in the brain, we can actually determine from clinical examination, say this is where we think that the problem is and we can control it based on those modalities. And especially in this day and age with um, you know, concussions. We do see that certain injuries from yeah. previous, you know, football injuries, sports injuries, trauma from falls, how that can also propagate injury and tremor control and motor control issues. Yeah, there seems to be a far more focus on that nowadays, especially with what you hear what's going on in the NFL, that, um, you know, years later, uh, some of these athletes have some, uh, have developed Parkinson's or Parkinson-like mm -hmm. symptoms and they kind of go back to maybe looking at their career and going, well, you know, you had two or three concussions here. Yes. Let's kind of, uh, let's kind of map out uh, what happened, right? Correct, correct. And, you know, with more understanding of how kids are developing and playing sports and right. maybe it's as a threshold of a certain age and how the brain is developing and maybe we can change the course of the disease so that if there is concussions, which again in sports such as boxing and football, it's hard to, you know, get away from. Yeah. But uh, the propensity of reducing those risks are very key. Uh, tell me about the program at Hogue, the Movement Disorders Program, and what makes it unique and different? And well, I'm, I've been very fortunate in the last two and a half years coming from my fellowship training to be at uh, Newport, and uh, Hogue as an institute has allowed us to develop the program even more so that we're expanding into Irvine and all of Orange County. The program is a very comprehensive program. I work with Dr. Janet Chance, and she and I both work together in making sure that patients feel comfortable, one, getting the right diagnosis. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misdiagnosis. I would think That's, there would be, yeah. And 30% of patients, let's say for instance with Parkinson's disease, don't have tremor. And there's a lot of misdiagnosis yeah. based on not obviously seeing a certain rhythmic type of tremor. Mm -hmm. And so what our goal has been is with education through the community and the whole uh, Neuroscience Institute and the whole program as a whole is allowing us to further not only diagnose, treat, and then get the best uh, new therapeutic models that are there, but then we have the physical therapy, the speech therapy, and the occupational programs that exist to further enhance uh, therapeutics. Yeah, I can see where that can really be um, a very hard thing to pinpoint a problem for people that may have been misdiagnosed or not diagnosed at all. So it's a possible you could have the early onset of Parkinson's and yet not have any symptoms or can you have have certain types that somebody may not initially relate to Parkinson's? And you know, it's a great question. You know, one of the things is uh, it's, it can be even like two, three years, maybe even longer, eight years where people go undiagnosed. They've had falls that they can't explain, maybe getting up to go to the bathroom and feeling like, why are they going to the bathroom? You know, three, four, five times a night. And again, it's a motor control disease of the muscles. And so the bladder being a muscle also affects people and not thinking, hey, how is Parkinson's affecting, you know, potentially other muscles of the body? Because what people don't know and what we try to educate is it's a disorder of tremor, stiffness, slowness, and walking instability. And you don't have to have all of those necessary constellation of symptoms. And the muscle tightness or rigidity that we see in Parkinson's affects other aspects. So patients go to urologists and maybe urologists can't figure out, hey, why is the bladder not working the way it's supposed to? Or they go to an orthopedist and they have shoulder pain and muscle pain and they can't find any structural abnormalities. Mm -hmm. And so we end up seeing the patient after the fact of, you know, long investigative uh, unutilized therapies. And so again, what Hogue has been able to promote is that comprehensiveness and care between the internists, the surgeons, and uh, we get to really work very close with our with the great top neurosurgeons in the county. Very interesting. Uh, when it comes to um, Parkinson's, I, I always like to ask this whenever somebody brings up uh, some sort of a, a disease, whether it's Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, or whatever it may be, is um, there some uh, hereditary in there where you can go back and look and uh, for instance, maybe someone in your family, your parents uh, develop Parkinson. Do you have more of a chance? Yeah, you know, the, it's very hard right now in this day and age to explain how genetics plays a role. But mm -hmm. we do know there is some hereditary form. Okay. It's usually less 
than 5%. And you, we usually okay. say 2 to 4% of a genetic So it's less role. than maybe other like heart disease or things Correct. like that. Correct. Yeah. Usually Parkinson's and movement disorder cases typically range around the age of 60, 65. And we start seeing that at this time of age that there's a normal progression of, of symptoms that are, that are in the demographics. However, when we start seeing patients getting symptom control issues that are, you know, of tremor or muscle tightness mm -hmm. or walking instability in their 30s and 40s, and then they have family members that are first relative uh, siblings, parents, cousins, then we start to suggest, is there some genetic component to it? And we do see that certain Scandinavian countries, certain oh, Asian countries, certain um, families that do exist, that there is some genetic uh, predisposition. Are you um, seeing more Parkinson's today, or is it just better diagnosed? Another great question. I or think is there even common, an answer to that? I, I, you know, I think it's going to be a combination of the two. Yeah. I think that now with the subspecialty of neurology, and yeah. now that even a movement disorder uh, specialty or fellowship exists, we're seeing that the diagnosis is better. Yeah. That's, de that's a definite. And that may be it right there. And that may be yeah. part of it. But then at the same time, I think people and family are better educated. We mm -hmm. have better uh, utilization of tools with online resources. We have a great support system in Michael J. Fox Foundation that is right. always promoting growth and research. And so the awareness of celebrities and family members also that you see on TV are making those more aware of the disease. Yeah, I think it's something um, that maybe years ago was hidden or, uh, you know, not, it just wasn't, it was one of those things, especially with celebrities, I think the last thing they would ever do is come out and say, we have this because they, they want to keep working. But with someone like Michael J. Fox and others uh, that have uh, just stepped right out and said, here's the disease I have, let's go forward and see if I can't help with it, right. um, has, has made a big change. It's, you know, it's been a, a pleasure having you on today. and. Uh, uh, I want to give the, the number, this is the, uh, the department number, 949-764-7363, and uh, what you guys are doing over there is uh, fantastic, because what I can see, it's comprehensive. You're not just looking at one thing, you're, you're looking at all the different possibilities, and uh, it's great, great to have you on. Well, I appreciate it, thank you for the time. Yeah, hope to see you again, well, and uh, we want to thank Hogue again, and again, um, uh, the Department of Neurologists and Movement Disorders, 949-764-7363. Doctor, thank great. you. Great, thank you. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's great having you on.